too. Um, so let's start with the cheers on the count of three. Claudia, you're being so good with water. We're very proud of you. <laughs> One, two, three. Cheers. 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 Thanks everybody for being here. And now on to the main show, which is Alaskan sockeye salmon. So with that, oh, everybody can hear our volume okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear our volume okay. We're good there. We're hoping that you have fun. We're gonna show you our social channels so if you're having a good time as this process goes through, we'd love for you to take pictures, tag our Instagram or Chef's Garden. Um, and then one other really exciting piece of news for anybody that has not seen us on our social is that we applied for an entrepreneurial contest through the Jacksonville Business Journal and BBVA Compass. It was for a $10,000 grant. We were throwing out this idea. And I want to thank everybody that has supported us because we actually found out this week, or actually last week, the end of middle of last week that we won that grant so thank you Woo! all of our supporters we're so excited Fantastic. and cheers again cheers again drinking lots of wine tonight cheers thank, thank you. you so we're so excited that these classes that started really as a matter of survival for us have really become a silver lining and then we get to cook with people and connect with people from all over so we're excited to be here and now with that i will pass it over to jamie to go over yeah. We I, hope everybody besides Soy, and we're going to make it up to you, Soy. We're going to send you a recording and make sure you get this kit so that you can do this again. Um, but we're glad that you're here so that we can spend some time and connect with you. And then we'll send you this recording so that you can create this dish again. And knowing UPS, it'll be there in just a minute since it's not in time. We get really lucky. Okay. It's we happened before. <laughs> we started a class and the kit showed up. But um, so. We do want to thank everybody. And it is really cool that, I mean, we all know that this is great. And we have so much fun and it's very popular, but it was great to find out. Just speak back a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Cutting your head off, sorry. Sorry. Maybe I'll just, it's great to know that um, somebody else thinks it's a great idea. Um, and uh, we're super thankful. And so let's get to it. So let's go through the ingredients first. And then we will go through our equipment. Um, so if everybody can, are we going to pin I'm gonna, our? So we have, we we've spotlit. Can everybody see the Jen and Jamie screen with that cutting board? Am if I, you don't need to see this as the big picture, making sure everybody knows that you can go up to view and click gallery view, and then you can see everybody's faces that are on since we have a nice group. Um, and if you end up at certain points wanting to see a close up, then you can always the three ellipses at the top of your screen, you can just pin our video um, or of our, of our screen. Okay, so. Okay, okay. So we're gonna start with the ingredients and then, so the butternut squash, I'm gonna show you, I'm, so it's very, very difficult, if not impossible to find 30 butternut squash that are the same size. So I had to sort of cut some of them because they're huge and whatever, but I will show you how to cut that butternut squash. Cause it's, it's not easy. It's very, very hard. So I'll show you how to do that and how to roast that. So speaking of which roasting, everybody preheat your oven to 350 degrees if you haven't yet. Okay, let's get that. Let's get our ovens preheated. And that is for our squash. Cool. All right. So there's a lot of ingredients here, so I'm, I'll be methodic about it. Um, so everybody has a shallot. This is a uh, lemongrass. This is another difficult thing to, we, we're gonna have to beat this up and bruise it a little bit. And I'll show you how to do that later, it's sort of fun. Get your aggressions out. Uh, we have ginger root. The ginger root is for, some of it is for the sauce and some of it is for our butternut squash. We have a little bag of aromatics here. We have cilantro, we have a kefir lime leaf in here, and we have two cloves of garlic, okay? Let me go ahead and get those out. If you don't like cilantro, it's not, it's not a, a dish breaker. It's just nice to add it at the end. It's a nice um, garnish. We have baby bok choy. We're gonna have to wash this in a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. 
We have salt and pepper. Now our sauce ingredients. I told you the sauce is a lot of ingredients. So I've consolidated some of the ingredients into um, uh, less containers. So we have sesame oil. We have soy sauce, which is half of the soy sauce is gonna be for the Thai barbecue and half of this is for our baby bok choy. We have Worcestershire and hoisin. Everybody knows what Worcestershire is. Hoisin is like a soy, uh, soybean paste, uh, based sauce. Fresh orange juice. So this is tomato juice, balsamic vinegar and honey. This is Thai sweet chili. Um, you can use plum sauce if you have plum sauce. Brown sugar, uh, three ounces of this is for the sauce and one ounce of this is for our butternut squash. So I'll, when we get to that, I'll show you. This is Dijon mustard and uh, sambal. Sambal Olek is a, uh, is a Vietnamese chili paste, delicious and very spicy. And then we have some olive oil, which we're going to use to sear our salmon. So, and then we have our, our salmon. And I put my salmon, I'm going to cut it out of the cryo back um, in a little bit. Um, and just have like it on a plate or some sort of dish like this so we can see that or not. So let's uh, give me a thumbs up if we have all those ingredients. Good, good, good. Yes. So wait, you caught up with us. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. No, I don't have any of those right. ingredients. All I have is. Right. Um, soon. Okay. So equipment, you need, you're gonna need a spoon. You're like, what? Yeah, you're gonna need a spoon. Uh, you're gonna need all this stuff. Okay, so. If you don't have like Sean has a spoon. If you don't have like a, a meat mallet or something to pound something with, you can use a rolling pin because we need to bruise our lemongrass with something, a blunt object. Um, so for some reason I don't have a meat mallet, so I'm gonna use a rolling pin. And if you don't have a rolling pin or a meat mallet, I'll troubleshoot with you. Uh, a pair of tongs. You can hand them. <laughs> you could use a hammer. If you happen to have a hammer handy in your kitchen, you can use that. Um, some sort of stirring apparatus, like a rubber spatula or a wooden spoon. Um, another spoon. And then... Um, so are they supposed to be different shapes? No, just, no, I just happened to grab two spoons. Our... One spoon will suffice. I have two. Um, and then a, a roasting pan uh, that's large enough for our butternut squash. Okay. Wow. And then we have a we have a saute pan, which actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook our bok choy in this first, and then we're gonna cook our salmon in it. Unless you have two saute pans, then you can use it one for salmon and one for bok choy. But honestly, who wants to have two pans to right, clean? So right. all so our methods. We'll do the bok choy first and then we'll set it aside and then we'll, we'll We'll do our salmon in that one. And then we need a nice little uh, medium sauce pot, possibly like a eight cups, eight, seven cup sauce pot to make our Thai barbecue sauce, okay? And then do we need a colander? We do need some sort of colander because um, baby bok choy needs to be cleaned. And it just needs to be rinsed off. In most cabbages or any, any vegetable that has crevices or whatnot, um, you need to clean it because um, you can get some soil in there or some... If you don't have a colander, though, you can use a bowl uh, and just put water. Just make sure that you don't dump the water. It sounds obvious, but don't dump the water once you're done. Just let the dirt fall to the bottom and then pull your bok choy out of it. Right. Okay, so let me give you a quick synopsis of uh, our cooking class tonight. Okay. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to get our butternut squash in the oven. I'm gonna show you how to cut that. Then we're gonna get our Thai barbecue sauce going. We'll prep that out and get it going, okay? And then we're gonna we'll do our bok choy, we'll clean it and we'll saute it. 
Um, while this is happening, we'll keep our eye on the butternut squash and make sure that it's cooking correctly. Um, and then when the butter, the bok choy is finished, we'll get that pan rinsed out and we will uh, sear our salmon. Our sauce will be done so we can glaze our salmon. Um, and then we will uh, present our dish. Okay, does that sound good to everybody? Who's ready to have some fun? Everybody feel right. good? Okay. So Jen, it's so, Twee. I don't have my first kit, thing we're so all I have is the salmon. I don't have the squash. squash. It can be a bear. Um, and anybody knows when you um, have like butternut squash or acorn squash, even sweet potatoes, they're really, really, really hard um, and uh, can be difficult to cut. So I'm going to start with a whole butternut squash. And in this, this, uh, this, the smaller part of the neck is solid. And then the larger lobe back here is actually hollow in the center. That's where the seeds are. So I'm gonna take this. Some people have a whole butternut squash and I've cut some of y'all's other ones. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut it right where the neck meets the larger lobe. I'm gonna cut it. What's really important here is you have a sharp knife. If you have a dull knife, it's gonna be, you're gonna have a tough go at it. Um, so let me see. Uh, okay, so then we have this solid neck Samita, part. If I'm saying that right, nice work. Looks awesome. Nice. Caitlin and Henry, we had no doubt. Rachel and Wyatt, I love it. Adele, Claudia. You really, you really have, have to commit. Throats. You really got to commit to that cut. Right Rebecca's there. committing to it. I see it. She's getting it. There we go. Um, She's got it. So some people have different nice. different parts of the squash. Okay, so those of you who have the neck part, this is tough. Okay, so it. There's not a flat surface. We can go like that and we can cut straight down on it. And when we do that, we gotta cut this guy on because this thing is like petrified. I mean, this thing gets so hard and that's obviously where it connects. Um, it'll really, so, so we always wanna use a flat surface. Let's take that Buck Creek sticker off there. So we know where it's from. Now, Jamie, a couple people, you did cut it because it was such a I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did. I did. I cut. Some people got this part. Some people got this part. So they're And set. some people, right. But those of us who have different parts, I'm just showing you how to cut the whole thing. Okay. So it's always best to have a flat, um, a flat um, surface. surface to cut. So it's not like rolling around and then you're like struggling and it rolls and you're like, oh, I cut myself. So flat and start at the top, okay? And just get it going, Be, go slow. Okay. Same thing with the larger lobe, the flat surface down. Ann and Sean, that was okay. a good teamwork And then there. get your knife in there and then sort of go back and forth. And that's the hardest part. Donna, Elizabeth, yep, we got pros on this class. I feel like people have cooked this dish before, this Lisa's butternut squash. So we want to take the seeds out. I always take the seeds out before I roast it. So simply in. Uh, um, so these aren't like pumpkin seeds? Yeah, you could toast these if you want. You can make little butternut squash. Capitas, but that's pumpkin seed. Anyway, just go ahead and um, scoop those out and discard them. Like that. And if you do a lot of these, and you don't wear gloves, your hands will turn like orange. orange. Fun fact. Fun fact. Same my thing. hands have turned orange. Same thing if you feed a lot of it to your baby. Right. Skin color will get orange. Okay. So this is where this is where our baking sheet, our sheet paint comes into play. Okay. So let's lay these on there. And then we're gonna take. like just like a teaspoon of olive oil and drizzle it on the flesh, okay? 
And then if you have same thing, same thing with both, just drizzle a little bit of olive oil. Should have plenty of olive oil left for our, our salmon, okay? So go ahead and preserve that olive oil and then take some of our salt and pepper. Just make sure you get it nice and a nice coverture of that olive oil in there. Okay. And now take some of that salt and pepper, sprinkle it right on there. Okay. Olive oil, salt, and pepper, flip it over. Okay. Flesh side down, skin up. Let's pop this in our oven, okay? Put it right in our oven, just like this, okay? We're gonna get a nice roasting, um, almost caramelization of the squash in the bottom side. And uh, this takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Go ahead and put it in your oven. Okay, so we're gonna set a timer on our side so that we can keep an eye on that for everybody. Are we able to put that on our screen? 15 minute timer or should I do it on my phone? This is our new app and I get so excited we can do these little doodads. 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 Doodads are fun. So that was the first spoon, the scooping spoon. Not everybody needed a scooping it's spoon. Confirm, it's at 350. Okay, Correct. so we have a 15 minute timer set and ready in my favorite color, red. Right there. Thank you, Justin. 350, yeah. Okay, and we're at 350 degrees. Okay. So what we're trying Let's to get, get to some, here, some thumbs up guys when your butternut squash is in the oven. In so the what oven. we're going for here is we're trying to get it where it's nice and pork tender. So everybody's oven is going to cook a little bit differently potentially. So that's what we're going for. We'll check it at 15. It may have to go a little bit longer. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Okay. All right. Just making sure the cutting board is nice and solid. <clears throat> um, so is everybody ready to, ready to make our Thai barbecue sauce? Okay. Yay. Uh, she's, no. <laughs> sorry. no. Um, all right. So. Nope, I don't have all the ingredients. I want to start with our lemongrass them. because <laughs> not everybody has used lemongrass and it's a wonderful, wonderful flavor. Um, I use it quite a bit. Um, and not your regular supermarket doesn't really carry lemongrass. So it is a, an Asian specialty item. And if you, if you have like if the outside of your lemongrass has some of these loose, like just take it off. So one thing to know about the lemongrass that we sent to you all, it came on a bigger stalk, but you're not yeah, going to eat. This is usually twice as long. It's really long, but it's so fibrous out near the top you can't even you, you can only use the white part which really comes out to like right there okay that's the only part that you need um, so i actually cut that down for all of you on the floor jennifer did i i gave her a cleaver and let her go to work got out my um, but don't worry about like this excess stuff in this um in the bottom part because take your blunt object um and we're gonna bruise it You just want to bruise that lemongrass. We're softening it. We are, it's releasing, while we're bruising it, it's actually releasing some of its like natural oil. It's so fragrant in your kitchen right now. You notice when we bruise it, all this stuff that we don't want, like this bottom core comes right off. This part is inedible. It's like tree bark. Everybody should take a very deep inhale. Okay. It's been a stressful week. This is a perfect way to start to unwind. From so it. that's really all we need, guys, is just a nice bruising, a nice bruising of our lemongrass, like so. Now, mm. it smells so good. So, good. Um, so now, take your knife. And we're going to finally chop this lemongrass as fine as you can get it, okay? 
And we're looking for about, you know, two and a half tablespoons, like two tablespoons of plenty. Where are we going to cut it? Like so, you know, that's a good amount. That's like two tablespoons right there. That's all we're looking for. Um, if you're making like soup or something or pho or I don't know, any some other Asian stock or soup, you can keep these lemongrass stocks and it's a nice aromatic for, um, for those things. Enough. Yeah, for sure. We make like a, this corn and lemongrass soup that is so good. Um, and we use that for aromatics in that. So, so go ahead and really, really chop this lemongrass up a little bit more. We really want to get it pretty fine. Okay, and then let us see some cutting board action if we can, so we can so let you know if we feel like we got it. This is pretty good. So it's like, uh, it's almost like the texture of like coconut flakes. Um, Oops, I couldn't I quite would say. see that. Adele, will you show me that again? Caitlin and Henry, y'all are looking good. Yep, Adele, that nice. looks good. Donna, that looks great. So Elizabeth, yep, that looks good. Christy, great. Kathy, awesome. So go ahead and put Rebecca, that. Looks good. Put that chopped lemongrass. Samina. In a little, good. like in a little, um, a little bowl. tiny bowl like that. And then let me know when you're ready to move on to our next um, ingredient, which is gonna be the ginger root. Ginger root is hands down, between ginger root and like mustards, they're like my favorite ingredients in the kitchen. They are so, um, they just go with so many different cuisines. It's amazing. Ginger is not just for Asian cooking but it's pretty predominant. So don't start doing anything yet. I'm not. Got busy hands. So if you notice the only, if you are, if you want to start breaking I've, up. But, I, but I've given you, I've given you, given y'all, um, cause our ginger root needs to be split in half. So I've given you quite a bit of ginger root and we're gonna, we're going to um, mince half of it and put it with our lemongrass. And then the other half we're going to set aside because we're going, I'm going to show you how to grate ginger root and squeeze it into the butternut squash. Okay. And so and we only need, if you could just eye it and just set aside half of your ginger root and set the other half aside. Ann and Kristen, I like y'all's method. I see y'all okay. observing. So if you can see my cutting board, I have, I have half right here and the other half is right here. Okay. So right it looks like everybody's almost done with, um, the lemongrass. Elizabeth's got a cleaver. She did. She had no Ooh, problem serious. with that lemongrass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's serious. That was cute. Okay, so anybody not ready to move on to ginger? Claudia, that looks good. Okay, and we are ready then. I can already smell that squash. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is where we're I like to use spoon. I like to use a spoon when I clean ginger. Um, it does really well to uh, clean the skin off of it because it just takes the skin off. And like if you use like a paring knife or something, it actually takes more off than you need. We're just just take your spoon and just just take that skin okay. off. Can we see that? You see how the spoon just easily takes it right off and then leaves all that nice juicy ginger on there. Okay, no paring knife needed here, just a spoon. And it doesn't have to be perfect guys, as long as your ginger is clean, the skin is edible. The skin is actually, when we make like dressings or vinaigrettes with the ginger, we actually leave the skin on it. We wash it, leave the skin on it actually, helps emulsify the um, dressing. But since we're- But since we're not mincing, making a right. vinaigrette, we are um, making a Thai barbecue sauce. So go ahead and finish cleaning the other, 
This is only half the ginger root, guys, okay? So we're only cleaning half of it. Go ahead and clean it with your spoon. Um, your kitchen continues yeah. to smell better sometimes, and better, Caitlin. Sometimes ginger is better than other times. Sometimes it's small like this, and sometimes you get big lobes, you know. We did our best uh, to send people decent my, size pieces. My, yeah, you know, they, I get what I get sometimes. But this ginger is pretty, it's pretty nice. It's just small. That's From all. a flavor standpoint, is From it flavor? No, it's, it's fine. It's just uh, sometimes they're just bigger. Right. Um, and they're, it's easier to, to deal with. But these are, this is nice and fresh and moist. It's good. It's good. Dry ginger root, dry old ginger root is better for like, you know, seasoning stocks or soups or something. Um, anyway, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, like save it if it dries out for things like that. Well, yeah, or you can pulverize it and have ginger powder. But anyway. Okay. Um, so we have our ginger. We're just about done cleaning it. Okay. Okay, so give us a thumbs up when y'all are done with that. And, we are almost and, done. And then I'm going to show you a cool way to cut ginger. Um, all right. So my ginger is clean. I'm going to clean up this little mess here. Boom. Okay. So ginger root. It, the fibers go this way. Okay. The fibers go up and down. So if you want to cut your ginger root against the fibers into little like discs, let's do a close up. Like like little nickel sized discs. So the fiber is going up and down. You can actually take your knife and put it on top of that and pop it. And it sort of smashes your ginger down. And so it minces super, easy, super, super easily. Like that. Or you can just take your ginger and cut it in slices like most people do and then cut in like tiny slivers, tiny little matchsticks like that, and then turn it perpendicularly and dice it really small. Like that. And we want to mince this pretty small, just like our lemongrass. It's not, it's a different texture, so it's not going to be quite so flaky. Um, but you want nice, small, minced ginger like that. And I'll show you that other technique. It's like a, you know, like a coin size. You take your knife, you smash it. Similar like garlic clove. But, and it smashes nicely. And then you just, you just cut it. There's several ways to tackle ginger. I'm going to show you another way. When we do the puree, we're going to grate it, which really releases all those juices. And you can like squeeze it and just get that ginger juice out. And it's such a concentrated, delicious flavor. Okay, if you have a method preference, send it to us. Send it either come off mute, tell us your preference if you found a way that's more successful. Or throw it in the chat. Like <clears throat> ginger has like medicinal Qualities. powers that like if if anybody in my family you know has a cold or gets sick, I like I make this bone chicken bone broth chicken soup with uh ginger and dill and lemon. Claudia, and like, you've had it. It's our um it's delicious. It's well, it's we your, also the, we do a matzo ball. It's soup what he too. does for his matzo ball soup. It's the base for his matzo ball soup. Is this he uses the ginger in it? So definitely so like some non-Asian dish applications for the ginger, right. for sure. So go ahead and finish the rest of that half of ginger that we that we discussed that we have, and then we're going to dice our shallot, which is going to be our onion and our garlic ingredient in our sauce, and then we're ready to make our sauce.
Okay, so Elizabeth, did you use a um, mortar and pestle to help you? Oh, nice. That was a great, like, that was a good call. That's another good idea. That's the smashing technique, yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. I like that. There we go. So we got ginger and lemongrass. Let me know when you uh, are ready for our shallot, and then we'll we'll do our shallot. Okay, Barb, are Paul and Sam busy cooking? You look nice and relaxed. We like it. I'm very relaxed. We're actually, since we're in California. I think you're totally on mute still, or like your volume's down. All right, guys, let me know when you're ready for the shower. Okay. Claudia's Joseph's on. good. Claudia's Joseph's on. Good. Rebecca, how are you doing? Kathy, you good? Kathy's awesome. always, she's always, she's always good. on. She's always on. All right, good. so. Donna, like I, how are you doing? Okay. Samina's looking good, I think. We're going to. Oh, so hey, Jamie, Jen, can you hear me? It's Claudia. Can you hear me? It's Claudia. Hit a uh, built in output and see what happens. Can somebody let us hear? Barb, that was us. That was not your technical difficulty. That was our technical difficulty. Thank you, Caitlin, for letting yes. me know you could hear. Yeah, can you so hear us? Yeah. Now we can. Now yes, we can. Thank you. We're like, everybody <laughs> Jamie, so quiet. <laughs> Jamie, look what I bought. Oh, and she nice. got a Mason. Yes. Nice. Yeah, okay. because you were loving on it so much. So this, nice. I, we are not paid to tell everybody this, but we want to tell everybody. We've got this great new knife. Claudia bought one from one of our classes. It's called Mason, M-I-S-E-N. It's based out of Brooklyn. Actually, a friend that I went to high school with way long ago um, works through this company. That's how we found out about it. But it's all Japanese steel. Um, they are phenomenal. This is a $65 chef knife. It cuts just like $120 chef's knife. Yeah, same, for sure. Same quality. Jamie has always cooked with um Wustoffs and Globals. Thank you. See, I help you with bowl words like that. You help me with stuff and Globals. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you gotta respect this knife though. Like the first oh, yeah. time I had it, I was nicked within about two minutes. The part, you know, I had I hadn't picked it up correctly under here. So I, I took me to, uh, I had to respect the knife, man. But this took care of the squash tonight, no problem, right? It's right, a great that, knife. Exactly. I'm so glad I did it. Slice yeah. through it like butter, right? Claudia, the good thing is- Like it, butter. When it, butter. When it cuts your finger, it's at least a clean slice. Much better than a dull knife cutting <laughs> your finger. So- Yeah, listen, it's still healing. <laughs> respect <laughs> the knife, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I followed your lead and got one. It's a fabulous knife. Good, nice. good, good, good. So glad to hear that. So Barb, <laughs> is your team cooking? Is Paul and yeah, we're, we're not. We're kind of going uh, stealthy. It's 3.30. We're in California. So okay. we're really early. So we're having happy hour with you all okay. right, from the West Coast. And uh, yeah, we're taking notes. We have like a game plan. So we've checked all our ingredients and we have the recipe in front of us. Um, Perfect. My husband and my colleagues are here and, and Sam's going to guide us. So we're getting our team plan together so that we can, but we're going to relax for now since we're right. kind of early for dinner. We like, it. We right like it. So a few of you have mentioned not seeing your instructions. So when this class is over by tomorrow, we'll re-email all the instructions. So it's in your email. Everybody has it so that you can recook this dish. Um, oh, okay. And now Again. after- Yep. Again, it's Twee. I still have not gotten my kit, so all I have is my salmon, tomato sauce, orange juice, uh, balsamic vinegar, and honey that you guys sent earlier this morning. So I'm just waiting for that to get. I know. Uh, I'm so sorry. We can reship. We'll try reshipping you another kit with the instruction list. So after you kind of watch the demo, you can yeah. follow. Okay. Yeah, so everybody's having fun and having the kitchen smells really good with ginger and gar and garlic and that. I I I, I, I have no smell. <laughs> just a drink. You just got huh? a drink. You just got a drink. <laughs> yeah, I've been drinking. I've there been drinking. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It breaks our heart. UPS breaks our heart right now. UPS is breaking our heart. That's uh, okay. I'm watching. I'm taking notes at the same time, so I'm good. 
and and I've been drinking, so don't worry. <laughs> they were going to send you the instructions in case you drink too much. You need to <laughs> send you the video too. Okay. Okay. So okay. now on to the shallot. The shallot. Okay. Okay. Shallot. So um, you can substitute onion if you have if you don't have a shallot and you want to make this barbecue sauce. Um, you can substitute a regular onion is fine. Um, I'm just using shallot because it sort of takes the place of the onion and the garlic, okay? Because um, it has sort of the characteristics of both. Um, so first of all, locate the top of your shallot and then the bottom, the root part. Only cut the top off, okay? And then cut it in half lengthwise because this root part is what's going to hold the shallot together. Should okay? we check our squash? Um, you can. It should, probably isn't done yet. Our, where's our timer? I think our timer is done now. Um, Hit our first 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> or when you're busy cooking. Or when you're cooking. <laughs> um, no. How's everybody else's? So what you're looking for here, ours is not ready, but what you're looking for is fork friendly. Yeah, no, it's got another like, 10. 10 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna set another 10 minute timer on our side so that we can take a look. And we have the schnazzy um, timer on our screen, but I'm also gonna set a timer on my phone that gives me a, ver a, a verbal reminder. Okay, guys, um, back to the shallot. So we've cut the top off. We've cut it in half lengthwise. We still have the root that's holding it together. We're gonna peel the outer layer off the skin. And uh, I would like for you to cut your onions like this too in the future if you don't. Um, it just, it's a lot easier and it, uh, your dice will be much more uniform, um, but you don't have to, it's not required. Um, peel the outer layer off, just like that. And then take your knife, and go halfway up from the cutting board, halfway horizontally, make your incision, into your shallot, stop right before you get to the end, okay? So your shallot's still intact, it's still in one piece. And then turn it and make vertical incisions from the top, I sound like a doctor, vertical cuts like that. So you have one horizontal, three vertical, and then take it perpendicularly and make your dice. And you get these beautiful little tiny dices, dice. 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 That was awesome. There we go. See? Beautiful. Dice shell. Who said that was awesome? I missed it. Elizabeth, isn't that such a cool technique? So again, fingertips on top of the shallot, or if you're doing an onion, do it the same way. Halfway up, horizontal cut, stop, turn it, vertical and then turn it perpendicularly. Boom, boom. Nice. Good. We're gonna prep one more, one more ingredient and then we're gonna make our sauce, which moves pretty quickly. I'm gonna give you all just a second to finish that shallot. Does everybody know what this ingredient is? Who knows? Oof. Lemon. Not is some, lemon. Is Close. somebody crying? Uh, your... That's the kefir lime. Yes, yes. it is. Um, do we have tears from this shallot? It is. Yes, like that shallot can be um, pretty potent. So the key, I stepped oh my God. One of the keys is oh. not to cut it. A couple um, of keys. There's, there's a few um, urban legends about that, but like um, definitely have a sharp knife. Good the less the less you like bludgeon the onion or shallot, the less it emits that gas that hurts your eyes. Have a well ventilated kitchen and then breathe through your mouth and not your nose. Breathe through your mouth and you're less likely to cry. So just a reminder for everybody that your ginger, your lemongrass, and your shallots can all be in one bowl. So those don't have to be kept separate. All right, oh last God. thing, the kefir, kefir lime leaf. We only need half of this. So 
the other half, because this is it's a very strong, wonderful flavor. You can take the other half and uh, store this in the freezer. You store these leaves in the freezer, they stay nice and fresh. Really? Yes. That's good to know. They'll stay nice and green and fresh. They're wonderful. Oh my God. We keep ours in the freezer. So take your leaf and we're gonna roll it. Roll your leaf like you're rolling a little tiny cigar. And then take your knife and just cut little ribbons. Little ribbons of your lime leaf. Then it smells so good. And if you really like it, you can cut the other one too. I mean, of course you're gonna really like it. It tastes wonderful. So we have these nice little um, lime leaf ribbons. And we're gonna keep those right here on the cutting board because we're gonna add those after we've added all the other ingredients, then we're gonna add our lime leaves, okay? So keep them right there. So let's, just to recap, we have our shallot, lemongrass, and ginger right here. We have our kefir lime leaf um, chiffonade, if you will, right here. And then we have, everybody have your sesame oil, have your Thai sweet chili, have your tomato balsamic honey, your orange juice, your hoisin Worcestershire, the soy sauce, we're gonna use half of it. Brown sugar, we're gonna use three tablespoons of that, or three ounces, sorry. And then our Dijon mustard and sambal, okay? Have all that out and go ahead and take those lids off because when we're doing this, it's gonna go fairly quickly. So this is also a great time to refresh your drink if you need to, okay. pour a little bit more wine because Let's it is it's this either is, Friday night is, or Friday is, happy hour. This is going to smell really, really good. So, so should we have any heat on our stove top right now? How, uh, much, how much sesame oil should we have? Because mine spilled everywhere. So. so it's just one tablespoon of sesame oil. Thank you. Take all of your screw tops off. Now y'all save these containers and hand wash them because they do not do well in the dishwasher, but hand wash them and you can use them for several different things. Um, mostly storing small amounts of liquid. <laughs> so All right, everybody, everybody get, your, get your medium sauce pot, turn it on medium heat, medium heat with gas. If you have an elect electric stovetop, go medium hot. Okay, so we're gonna flip you back to our stovetop so you can see where we are. There we go. And then we have about three and a half minutes on our butternut squash too, just keep an eye on that time. Yeah, I'm gonna check that because it's probably Okay. So y'all, before we get started on the sauce, we're gonna check our butternut squash. See how it's looking. Looks like it's almost done. Feels like it's almost done. Almost. Almost. Okay, so we're sticking with our original timer. Five more minutes. Okay, so we have our sauce pot. Do you think everybody else is at five? Yeah. Okay, I mean, so everybody check it, but I think it has a little. Let's bit everybody check your butternut squash. I think everybody has a little bit longer, but go ahead and check. It. Does everybody feel? Does everybody understand what they want their it to feel it needs like? Needs to be fork tender. Fork tender. Okay. You should be able to like press it with your finger and have no resistance. It should be nice and soft. Okay. All right. So all right. Back so to medium sauce top. pot on. Sesame oil in the sauce pot. There's more than a tablespoon in what we sent for most of you. So just one tablespoon. Now we're gonna add our shallot, ginger, and lemongrass to the sesame oil. Okay. We're gonna saute this for about a minute and a half until it becomes very, very fragrant. 
like more than the sesame oil fragrance. Right. Like the initial. The initial what went in there? Or the shallots, ginger, and lemongrass? So it's the ginger, lemongrass, and the shallot that we just put in the sesame oil. And we're gonna get it so that, that we can smell those fragrances over the sesame oil. It's gonna take like two minutes, so. Did somebody have a question? Go ahead. You may want to turn on your ventilation system. Um, question, is the, um, is the ginger about a quarter cup? Mine seems like a lot. Did you take, did you cut your ginger in half? I did. So that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. ginger right. should it be? Yeah, that's about right. Quarter cup, okay. Okay, so as we're letting that cook, can you drop it in the chat or feel free to jump off mute? Tell us what you're enjoying tonight as you're cooking. So we're drinking a Sancerre right now, which um, is actually what they recommended. We, we have a great local wine shop, but they suggested the Sancerre to go with our dish. We thought we might like it more for cooking the dish. Um, so that's what we started with. But what is everybody else enjoying right now? Kathy, I know you're drinking something wonderful. Okay, this is gonna go pretty quick. Okay. okay, do we have a minute for Kathy to tell us? No, we don't have Oh, Kathy, pause. Thank you for showing us. I can't quite see it though. Oh, it's a Sancerre. Oh, it is a Sancerre. Oh, nice, okay, cool. Good one to drink or to uh, cook with. All right, so our, our lemongrass, ginger, and shallots are getting nice and soft. Start to smell really nice. Okay, we're gonna give it like another. It smells so good. All right, the first thing we're gonna to add to this is going to be. Um, so everybody take out their brown sugar. This is four ounces of brown sugar. We want to add three ounces and leave one ounce in here. Okay. Everybody follow me? So you wanna add three fourths. Of add three fourths of this brown sugar, leaving one ounce. Doesn't have to be exact, okay, but pretty, you know. So we wanna add this brown sugar. Okay, leaving an ounce of brown sugar. And we wanna stir that in and sort of okay. melt. This is sort what of melt, sort of melt that brown sugar it. in there. We're gonna stir that brown sugar in. Get it to melt a little bit. Stirring it in. Okay. And now we can add our tomato <laughs> honey. Okay, tomato honey. So really, you really want to get a spoon. This is what the, uh, like the whole thing. Yes, Elizabeth. The whole thing. No, not the whole thing. We're putting in the. We're putting. We're gonna put all these in pretty much at the same time. So we put in the tomato, balsamic, and honey. That's what I just put in there. Now we're gonna put the hoisin and Worcestershire. Now the hoisin and Worcestershire. Everything's yep. measured out. So go ahead. Elizabeth, go ahead and put both of those in. Oh, like the entire content. Yep. The entire. Yep, we've measured those out. For what you. am I putting yeah. in next? Lily? I put the ketchup. What am I putting in next? Sorry, one second. Jamie's being loud at back there, getting everything out. Ask me that question one more time. What am I putting in after the tomato, honey, and whatever it was? And we're gonna put in the hoisin and Worcestershire. Okay, we're gonna really add all these, okay? So now add your Thai sweet chili. 
Can we throw this in the chat too so that everybody knows what we have? So one tablespoon. We have I will tell you guys, there's no like exact order. I'm just going in in order. Okay. You can put all these ingredients in, but I just want to go step by step so we don't miss anything. All right, I just want to remind everybody what we have in so far. Correct. So, so far we have uh, one tablespoon of sesame oil. And then we have, we can send it each one at a time if you want. And then we have our ginger, shallots, and lemongrass. And then we have our- Three ounces of brown sugar. Three ounces of brown sugar. I'm waiting. And then the tomato and balsamic. Then, I, I, oh, 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 okay. And then we have our tomato, balsamic, and honey, all of it. And then we have poison and Worcestershire. Poison and Worcestershire. All of it. Do you know how to spell Worcestershire? Watch Jamie. He does. W O R C E S T E R S H I R. -E. He's a really, he won the spelling bee in like, <laughs> he won the spelling bee in like second grade. <laughs> now add, now we're going to add our orange juice. O-R-A-N-G-E. <laughs> We've also added our sweet chili. Sorry, I have a quick question. Um, is the um, orange juice, sweet chili, hoisin, and tomato balsamic, they are all the entire content of the yeah. Correct. Okay. They were all measured for you. The only thing that wasn't fully measured for you um, in the packaged ingredients was the sesame oil, just one tablespoon, and the brown sugar, just three ounces of what we sent, because we're using some of it for later. And then this is the other ingredient where you're going to use half. It's the soy sauce. Add half of the soy sauce and reserve the other half, okay? That's good enough. Was it all of the orange juice? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too, because it wasn't my house. <laughs> yeah, I just put all the orange juice in too. And half the soy sauce. Jen, I think you're on mute. Yeah. Is it half the soy sauce? Half the soy sauce. Okay, sorry, can y'all can y'all hear us? Okay, give us one second. Our internet just dropped. So what I want everybody to do right now is check their um, butternut squash. We know there's an echo, we're fixing it. Give us one second. So a quick note about the squash. Um, it seems like some parts of it is, you know, fork tender, but then I think, you know, as it close to skin, it's really tough. So. So some of it's fork tender and some of it's not. Yeah. Really? So should she cut part of it? What, what part is not? I think more towards the neck is like not so tender. Did you cut just it? Leave, just leave it in for another five to seven minutes. It'll, if it's get, if it's starting to get tender, it finishes quickly. It takes a long time to get it to that point, but once it gets to that point, it goes quickly. So I okay. believe if you give it another five to, five to seven minutes, you'll be good. Okay, sounds good. Um, Cause this is, so mine, gonna, mine is Can you bring it up tender. here so we can show everybody what ours looks like? Um, so back to the sauce, I want to make sure we got everything in there um, because we didn't add the lime leaves before we got cut off there. So go ahead and add those lime leaves to the sauce. And then we're going to let it simmer. Once it starts come, once it starts getting to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, which is like medium low. <laughs> where we want some, a little bit of evaporation, but not, we don't want it boiling. Is everybody with me there? 
Is everybody good there? Did okay. everybody, and we got cut off. Did everybody add their Dijon mustard and their sambal? Add your Dijon mustard and sambal. Okay. And then the lime leaves. And that is everything that sauce needs. We're gonna bring it, once it starts boiling, turn it down to medium low and let it simmer. You just want it simmering, you do not want it boiling. Okay, so does anybody need us to go over, everybody feel good about what's supposed to be in the sauce? So like essentially we have, of the ingredients that we started with, we have half of our ginger root left, we have half of our soy sauce, we have some olive oil left, we have some brown sugar, and we have our bok choy. So everything else in those containers is in the sauce. Okay. Can everybody hear us okay now? Is it back to normal? Okay. Perfect. All right. So <clears throat> hot. So if we see the flesh is like it's like butter. It's nice and soft. We're gonna flip that over. <laughs> If you have like a toothpick or something, it just goes, it's without any resistance at all. It's totally fork tender. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely the part that takes longer to cook. Yeah, yeah but that's all you, I mean, that's, right. that's all you're looking for. This part does cook a little bit faster mm -hmm. for sure. All right, so we're gonna let this cool for uh, just a couple minutes so we can handle it and scoop it out because it's really hot right now. Okay, so if we can go back to the stove cam, I'm gonna show you what to look for here. Stove cam, do we see this? See how that's like bubbling pretty hard? We wanna turn that down. See my flame? That's too high. We wanna turn it all the way down. Oh my gosh, it smells so good right now. Show everybody what your flame looks like now. We want the flame all the way down there, like that, low, low, low. So this is an important part, everybody, just because it is so easy to over-reduce the sauce if you have your heat too high. So is everybody feeling good with where they are here? Right. The objective is, is we want this sauce to simmer. We want all these, these ingredients to come together. We don't necessarily want it, we want it evaporating a little bit. We don't want it reducing too much. Okay, just a little evaporation. You want to see a little steam on it and a little bit of bubbles, just a little bit. Okay, you don't want it to be like flat lining. You want, definitely want some action in there. Okay, Ivan, you feeling good on your side? Yep. But okay. note, note, this is a this is an important note. This sauce has any sauce you're cooking that has like sugar in it. It has a much. It'll boil much faster with that sugar in it than, than any other sauce. So when I say low, make sure it's, just keep an eye on it. That's all, just, I want you to keep an eye on it. Should be fine. Um, and uh, hoisin, the reason we want to simmer this sauce for like the remainder of the class till we're ready to glaze our salmon is because you need to cook hoisin. Hoisin is, um, it's a raw, raw like, like soy-based sauce and you need to cook that, cook it out. So it really releases its flavor and it's not such a raw soy flavor to it. That's okay. my story. So we're ready to move on to the salmon? We're gonna do the bok choy first. Bok choy, and then, okay. then the, the- So saving- The salmon for- Fruit of grass. Okay. All right, so our bok choy. So our butternut squash, keep monitoring, monitoring your butternut squash and uh, like I said, when it's done, it's nice and tender. Take it out, let it let it rest, um, so we can make our puree. So bok choy, everybody should have two bok choy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have a, a colander, or if you don't have a colander, just get a bowl of water, and we're gonna take our knife and we're gonna split the bok choy in half, okay? And then in half again. So we're gonna quarter it. So you have these nice, cool little, and save this, 
you want, it's all edible. So this like core down at the bottom, it holds it together for you. And it's gonna make a nice pretty presentation after we cook it. So split it exactly in half, okay? So we have it, can everybody see that? It's held together by the core, nice. So we're gonna essentially have eight pieces of bok choy, baby bok choy. Okay, and you can see there's a little bit of sediment in there. We're about to rinse that out, okay? So either get a bowl of water and put your bok choy in the bowl of water and let the sediment fall to the bottom and then take your bok choy out or simply just take your bok choy over your sink in a colander and just rinse it off, okay? I'm gonna do that real quick and I'll be right back. So Jamie, should we have a towel for drying our bok choy? Yeah, paper towel is good. Paper towel? Okay. So our kitchen is smelling great also because I'm actually breaking a rule because I read this great article. I've always cooked with just unscented candles around when I'm cooking. But I actually read this great article that you can cook with scented candles as long as you choose candles that complement the flavors that you're cooking with and the scents. So trying tonight, not sure that I found a perfect complement yet. It's a work in practice. It's sort of like finding the perfect complement to your wine. Should have done a little more lemongrass, I think, tonight. But it is just like when you go into a restaurant, and you get all those great mm. smells. It's part of creating that same ambiance in your kitchen for sure. So I'm just gonna lay this bok choy, uh, lay this bok choy out a little bit. Um, it's fine if it has a little moisture to it, because when we saute it, we just gotta be careful because the old saying with the water and the oil mixing, it pops a little bit. So I'll show you how to safeguard against that. It's pretty easy to just keep your face away from it and your skin. He teaches I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm just, I'm not. He scared. teaches cooking classes kind of like your parents, like very blatant. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you how to make that not happen. Um, so we're just going to pat this dry a little bit, get some of the ex excess moisture off. No big deal. Um, let it, let's let it hang out for a second because I want to chop our garlic which we failed to do earlier, which is... Uh, we all needed a break. That was, there was my, yeah, there was a lot of chopping going on there. Um, so everybody knows how to cut garlic, chop garlic. You can chop it, you can smash it and then chop it or do whatever you want. Um, or if you want to feel extra, you can, um, I'll manicure. show you how to manicure it. You just Who place... here knows how to manicure garlic? Who here knows? Okay, who's ready to learn? Okay. Samina, I love that kitchen. So I feel like you need to learn with that beautiful kitchen. So we're gonna show you. Okay. So it's very similar to our shallot um, technique. You just find the flat surface of your garlic and you're gonna stabilize it with your, and you're gonna make that horizontal cut really gently until it stops. And you wanna use that, the nub of the garlic. Okay, so we have that horizontal cut. We're gonna go up a little bit more and make another horizontal cut very carefully. And then you're gonna, this is like micro, and then you're gonna turn it just like we did the shallot and make vertical cuts. Being very careful. This is like next level garlic cutting and then turn it and cut it perpendicularly just like we did the shallot. And working in four-star restaurants, this is how we chopped our garlic. We didn't put it in a food processor and and uh, Tyra, I you like know, your method too. Tyra we, got out her garlic chopper and she, she's like, I'm done. <laughs> that that was a long time ago. Nowadays, I'm like, I chop garlic like I get it done. 
Um, so show but it, some show chefs, it done like if you're going free, you know, the guys with the Michelin, like, I guess they tell me that you can tell if the garlic's been bruised too much. I love garlic, so I don't know. I, I like bruised garlic, I guess. Um, but that's how you manicure the garlic. Or you can just smash it and chop it up. Same result. Okay. Same result. Now, um, if you could get one of your, so let's take your orange juice container and fill it like halfway with water. So you have two ounces of water in there, okay? Rinse it out first and then put two ounces of water in there. Because when you walk, when you, well, we don't have a walk, we have a saute pan. But uh, when you work, when you saute with high heat, I always have water available um, to, uh, like when you're wok searing vegetables, if you add a little water, it steams the vegetables. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And when we use, and this is where our soy sauce, the remainder of our soy sauce comes into play because we're gonna sear, we're gonna like wok sear without a wok. We're gonna sear our bok choy, okay? We're gonna season it just a tiny bit with salt and pepper. We're gonna get nice golden brown and then we're gonna hit it with soy sauce we're gonna hit it with garlic soy sauce and then water the water does two things it it um, helps the soy sauce not burn and it helps the steaming process to finish the bok choy and like really sear that garlic flavor into it it's really amazing i think you're gonna like it um but this is another like this is sort of next level here cooking so, so should um, we get our paper? everybody everybody check so I have nice, some nice activity in my sauce. It's like, you know, it's got a couple of bubbles happening. It's really uh, smelling fantastic. And there's a little steam coming off, a little evaporation, but we're not reducing too much. And taste it, just give it a little taste. It's pretty amazing. So should we have our back pan on? Yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our butternut squash over and I want everybody to put, turn your saute pan on high heat. Okay, and we'll give it a minute to get nice and hot, okay? So has anybody cooked bok choy before? It's not a regular veg to- Okay, to let's, cook. to recap, we have- uh, Of course, Caitlin and Henry, thank you. Yeah. That's because y'all do cooking classes yeah. all the time. To recap, we have our clean bok Emily choy. Too. We have our clean bok choy. We have our garlic, our minced garlic. We have one ounce of soy sauce. And we have two ounces of water, okay? Make sure we have all those things available right here, okay? So we have a little bit of olive oil. All we need is, so we have, we still have like two ounces of olive oil left. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna put a tablespoon of this olive oil, just enough in the pan to lubricate. It's good, thank you. There we go. Let's put one tablespoon of olive oil in that pan. Rebecca, I'm eating stir fry at your house next. I want it, That's fancy stir I want fry. this pan to be smoking, okay? Smoking hot. So let's give it a second and wait for that pan to smoke. So olive oil is in our pan. Yep. Okay. Swirl that around. I'll give it another like 15, 20 seconds and I wanna see a little smoke coming off there. Important that it is smoking hot when we put the bok choy in there because once you put the bok choy in there, it drops the temperature of your pan and we wanna sear it. We don't want it to like you know, boil. We want to get a hard sear on it. So like when they use woks and they control it with their knees, actually, the, the temperature, um, you always want to keep the wok on the heat. It's just like the same thing with saute pan. Always leave it on the fire. Don't take it off. Don't Stir, try to do yeah. fancy stuff, tossing it around. Always keep it on the heat. Don't want to lose that heat. All 
All right, do we have any smokes? Anybody's pan smoking yet? Everybody good? Here we go. So when you add this bok choy, be very careful. Okay, be very careful because there's still a little bit of moisture on here and it's gonna pop a little bit, okay? So go ahead. All of Hear it that? Is. And then use your tongs and move it around. Keep your face away from it. Put it in there. And then just let it sit. Don't touch it. Just get your bok choy in the pan. Space it out evenly and just let it sit and sear. For about how long? Uh, like a minute and a half. Okay. I want to get this super, keep it super hot. Yeah, it's got a nice yeah, pop. Yeah, nice pop. Um, and any leafy vegetables like spinach or kale or something, like if you ever deep fried spinach or kale, there's so much moisture in it, it like it can pop and explode in your face. So these bok choy leaves have a lot of moisture in them, so they can potentially um, pop. So just keep, just, just don't like get super close to it. Don't, especially your face, your, you know, your hands are fine. So should we start unpacking the- The salmon, yeah. Salmon we can get our, get our, you can get your salmon out and uh, take it out of the cryovac and let it breathe for a minute before we, uh, if you have extra moisture on there, you can pat it dry with a paper, paper towel. towel too, but go ahead and put that on um, a resting plate. We're putting it on a Pyrex to get it started. So we're just cutting it out of the Cryrovac. This beautiful sockeye salmon. Is everybody's kitchen nice and loud? Can y'all hear ours popping? Is our microphone picking it up? Yeah. So go ahead and take your tongs, wherever they may be, and just give that bok choy a little flip. Donna, we haven't done anything yet besides put olive oil, make the pan hot, and added the bok choy. We haven't added any of the garlic or water yet. We are trying to get a nice caramelization on our bok choy, okay? gonna get nice, get that nice dark sear on it. So if everybody can see, I'm gonna try to show you on our stove cam, see this nice caramelization on the bok choy, getting these nice golden brown sear on there. That's what we're looking for. Keep that pan on the heat. Okay, we're gonna give our bok choy another minute, and then we're gonna add our garlic, our soy sauce, and our water. So Jamie, you put it in, and now you flipped it. Is that correct? I flipped it. Okay, so everybody, we've done a flip. Everybody, everybody flip your bok choy. I just wanna make sure everybody heard it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Sure. Um, can this be done in a, um, in a walk, or is it better on the... If you have a walk, absolutely. A walk okay. is great. We right. simply um, don't use a walk barb just because when we're doing our classes, we try as much as possible to show people how to create things with the pots and pans and utensils they already have. Um, a walk would be awesome. Great, thank you. Yeah. Hey Gabs, good to see you. So a walk gets gets much hotter because the, um, the metal, the steel they use, it's, Thinner, it's really hard steel, but it's thin, and it really it gets hot so fast. It transfers that heat really, really well. So, is everybody ready to add our garlic? We're gonna add our garlic. We're gonna stir in the garlic until it's fragrant, which only take like 15, 20 seconds. Then we're gonna add soy sauce and water and let it steam and finish, okay? So add, in goes the garlic. 
and using our tongs, we're just going to agitate that garlic and get it in there, get it to toast. We don't want it to burn, we want it to toast. You're going to smell it almost right away. You can start smelling it right about now. A great flavor. So many good flavors tonight. Hey, that's two cloves of garlic that goes in the bok choy. Two cloves of garlic. Okay. All right. All right. It's ready. Soy, Soy. sauce. And immediately the water. Okay, so Emily, when we have a minute, you're gonna have to tell us about this trip, this trip um, with this salmon. This sounds like a good story. So we're gonna let this steam for another minute, then we're gonna take it off the heat, okay? Let it steam for another minute. We're getting that nice soy umami flavor without the burning, without the bitterness, because that's what that water does. So when that minute's done, let's take our bok choy out and set it on a plate. And then we're gonna I'm going to rinse the same saute pan and we're gonna cook the salmon in it. We wanna make sure we rinse all that soy out um, so when we're cooking our salmon, it doesn't burn. So, so you know what I love about bok choy as a vegetable is how vibrant that color stays even when it's cooked. It's beautiful as far as becoming a garnish. I mean, it serves as both a vegetable and a garnish when it goes on this plate, which is what's so nice about it. It's also sturdy. Everybody see where we're at there? Yep, we could see it when it was down on the stove top. Got that too. nice sear. Okay, <laughs> you smart guy. <laughs> but we appreciate it. So, so. Um, I love, it's one of my favorite vegetables. It looks so elegant and pretty on the plate. It tastes so delicious. I mean, this is just, I'm just plating the pop choy. This is even our, okay, make sure you get all that garlic. I could make more noise if I tried. <laughs> Sorry. And now I'm gonna clean this this really quickly and then we'll be ready for our salmon, okay? So while we're doing that, Emily, so salmon in Alaska, you're gonna have to tell us, this is fresh from Alaska salmon that we have. Um, so very exciting. We wanna go to a trip to Alaska. Um, so if you could give us like a, a quick, did you go fishing or did you see, I mean, it's, it's just such an amazing area for salmon. Alaska really is the best frontier. Um, my good buddy that was in the army with me, he transitioned to the Coast Guard and he's stationed there at Kodiak, Alaska. We went hunting, fishing, uh, both in the rivers for salmon and then uh, halibut and rockfish. And uh, we just had a good old time out there. Oh, that's awesome. So this is, um, part of a three-part series that we've done on Alaska seafood because we just think it's some of the best seafood in the world that you can possibly get. So the first class we did was halibut. This one is sockeye salmon. And the one that we're doing in December is black cod. Um, so for everybody that's on this class, and Jamie uh, is even more passionate about this than I am since he's been cooking it, but we both are pretty excited about it. I will tell you that what we love so much about Alaska seafood is the fact that the seafood that we're eating tonight is the same seafood that your friends, your family, your kids, whoever it is, will be eating 30 years from now. It's one of the only places that it's actually written into their state constitution that you have to have sustainability measures um, as far as how it's caught. So it's all wild caught salmon. Um, the main thing is you can taste the difference. So it's not only do you feel good about the way that it's caught from a ecosystem piece, but what you're actually eating is just such a better piece of salmon. It's not as flabby, it's firmer. Um, it's a healthier, it's a healthier um, So Adele, fish. if your sauce is getting pretty reduced, yes, turn, turn yours off if it's getting Yeah, it's pretty, pretty reduced. it's getting pretty good. We probably are down to like. Will you show a backup of ours? 
We now, Jamie, this is one where it might be helpful if you lift that up so everybody can see it. I was just giving it a stir. Okay. I'm gonna lift it up. It's got like, I'm gonna show you with yet another spoon. Um, so we want this sauce to like coat. And um, we can't see anything right there. It doesn't necessarily, it's not really thick. Okay, it's sort of a, uh, like, uh, you know, it barely coats the back of the spoon, but if you taste it, taste is what we're looking for. So Adele, do you feel like yours reduced too much by chance? Um, I think I think it's probably okay. I mean, okay. Just, the edges were getting really syrupy, so okay. I just okay, yeah, that's, that's good. It's syrupy, you're done. It's yeah. good. Okay, so mm, our sauce is off the heat and it's just sitting there. We're just gonna let it sit there. So, if you have a sieve or um, something to strain the sauce through, that would be great. You don't have to have it, but if you have a sieve to strain this through to get some of that lemongrass out, um, that would be ideal. It's not totally necessary. What about a slotted spoon? It's not. No, no, no. It would have to be like, it. yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you have one, that would be ideal. If you don't, it's it's no big deal. It really isn't. Okay. So can we it's do ours? It's just a textural thing. Can we do ours without them? Yeah. We're okay. just going to leave it just like that. So we're not going to use the sieve so that we're cooking like everybody might be cooking. The other thing is, if you don't have a sieve, you could use, could you use a, um, could you use a coffee, coffee filter? filter? No. no. Okay. It's a textural thing. It doesn't bother me. All right. Our salmon's patted dry. Now, this, this is the main attraction here. That sauce is like, the, you know, the best, the best supporting actor or actress to this. So everybody keep in mind, this salmon may have some pin bones in it, okay? I did my best to get them out. But keep in mind, there may be a, there may be a pin bone or two in it. So just, just be mindful of that. Just We want to just dust the salmon with a little salt and pepper, okay? Just barely dust because that sauce is so robust. We don't need a lot, okay? Just a little on both the top and the bottom, okay? Just a little dusting, so a light sprinkle, if you will. Who here cooks salmon a lot? Okay, so who here usually, like when you're choosing salmon, do you usually choose Alaska salmon or do you do like a farm raised salmon? Alaska, Samina? Okay, so then you can see the difference. You can, I mean, you know you know what it is, just this firm. The other thing that's amazing about Alaska seafood is like you could eat it raw like this and it would be delicious um, as far as that flavor goes. So for anybody else who maybe uses farm-raised salmon um, or who hasn't, you will really taste the difference just because the fish swim um, in the wild, it makes for just such a nice, firmer, um, beautiful filet. Okay, sorry, I'll let you keep going. Okay, so let's go ahead and I really want to make this brown sauce first. Do you? We can make this. Let's go ahead and turn our saute pan on medium high heat. We're going medium high. And again, similar to the bok choy, we want this pan to be really hot. Okay, we want to get a nice sear on the salmon and there's very few things that are really match the just the wonderful texture and flavor of crispy salmon. When you get a nice sear on a piece of salmon, that crispy, um, it's so good. It's so amazing. Um, it's so incredibly high in omega-3 acids. It's um, one of the healthiest um, fish you can eat, really. Um, and so it has such a great fat content. When you sear it, it really gets a nice crispy skin. It's so unbelievably good. So we're gonna wait for this pan to get hot. So let's give it another like couple minutes, make sure it's nice and hot. So Jamie, which side are we gonna sear first? So you always sear the presentation side 
first. Okay, so if you look at your fish, can we go this, front the bottom part is what is what is connects to the skin. That's where we have this little, it's a little more gray on the bottom. Okay, that's gonna sear off, but that part is connected is where I took the skin off of it. So the top is what was connected to like the, the, the rib cage or the, the backbone of the fish. Okay, that's the presentation side. That's the side we're gonna put down first. Okay. Now, if we were serving salmon with the skin on and we would score the skin with a knife, we would start um, again with this side and then we would finish on the other side and get that skin super, super crispy. But then we, knew we would present it with the skin side up. But we're not going to do that right now because I took the skin off for everybody. Not everybody likes salmon skin, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's so delicious. When it's cooked correctly and it's nice and crispy, it's so good. So another tablespoon of olive oil goes into the pan. Okay. Salmon has good fat content. You don't need a ton of oil. Go ahead, swirl that. That oil should be shimmering almost shimmering in there. Almost seeing a little smoke come off there. Very hot, okay? Now when you lay the salmon in there, again, presentation side down, you wanna lay it in the pan and lay it away from you. So if you happen to drop the salmon and it falls in the oil, the oil will splash away from you so you won't burn yourself. So down. Now, once you add the fish to the pan, don't touch it. Leave it there and let it sear. You might sear for like two to three minutes at least, okay? I'm gonna wash my hands. So while that's happening, guys, we don't really need to babysit the salmon right now. We're gonna let it sear for like a good three minutes at least, okay? So let's get a, uh, a small mixing bowl. And then we're going to scoop the flesh out of our butternut squash. Okay. I've got another question. Sure. Yeah. Um, does that salmon get seasoned at all? On the recipe it says salt and pepper, or does it just go down plain? We did add a little salt and pepper to just it. Just a little, yeah, not too much, just a little bit. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So we just want to scoop the butternut squash out of the skin. Okay. Scooping the flesh out. So y'all, okay. one of the most important things as Jamie so scooping So this that. is, you know, that's plenty for two people. You, you can do it all if you'd like. I mean, it will save nicely if you do some extra. Okay. And we do have a, a vegan so, here working with us, so this might be her dinner. <laughs> we're scooping. So does everybody have a, a grater of some sort, like a cheese grater or a box grater or something, or a uh, even a microplane will work. Does everybody have something like that? Because that's what we're going to do perfect, Donna. That's great. That's what we're going to use for this next ginger. So this is another ginger technique. Um, so we've scooped the butternut squash out. We're going to add that remaining one ounce of brown sugar, okay, to our warm butternut squash. And then we're going to take our ginger root. Meanwhile, we're keeping a close eye on that salmon. Probably almost ready to flip. Let me, uh, washing my hands. We're going to get that. I'm going to check the salmon and see if it's ready to flip here. Ooh, that's so nice. 
I'm going to give it another like 30 seconds. So let's wait on that squash. So that means your original three minute timer was perfect because we have exactly 30 minutes, 30 seconds left. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is y'all can see that when he even checked that salmon, it didn't stick. You never want to flip your fish when it's sticking to the bottom of the pan. Part of why you got it nice and hot and put that oil in. So it doesn't stick. So it doesn't stick. And if you try to flip it prematurely, it'll stick. So I'm writing a song about that, but I still haven't gotten there. So now we're gonna go ahead and flip it. Uh, Look at that, beautiful, beautiful, golden brown. I mean, can we see that? So nice. Crispy edges right there, it's beautiful. Okay, so. So now are we doing another three minutes on the other side? Yeah, we're back to the box grater. Find the small teeth, not the large teeth that, we, that you would grate cheese. Um, we're gonna go to the front screen. Okay, we're going, in. okay. Good. So the larger is grates are for like, the larger teeth are for like cheese. There's a smaller one, same thing as the cheese, but they're smaller. This is what we're gonna grate the ginger on. And if you have like a, a microplane, that'll work too. So you just take your ginger root with the skin on it and everything, and we're just gonna grate it. Okay. Great, just be careful not to grate your finger. Go ahead and grate all of the ginger you have, the remaining ginger you have. Okay. Now, get rid of all that. And on the inside, you have this beautiful grated ginger. Go ahead and squeeze, put that ginger in your hand and squeeze it all into your butternut squash. It's okay if a little bit of ginger gets in there, but you basically just wanna squeeze all that ginger juice out. That's why okay? it's okay to leave the skin on it. Right. I mean, you see like the little bit of ginger they got in there, that's cool, don't worry about that. Okay, so we have that ginger juice, our brown sugar, add another eighth of a teaspoon of salt and pepper, and then get a little whisk out and whisk that all together. That was a little- That's the, that's the beat for a that was song. a little tune right there. <laughs> okay, take your whisk and go ahead and whisk that together. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we're going to turn around and check our salmon. Okay, is everybody's oven still on? Is everybody's oven still on? Everybody's oven is not still on. Okay. So should we wait for a second? No. It just won't go throw it in. So depending on the size of your salmon, so this salmon's meant to be served like medium rare to medium, okay? So go ahead. Remember that water we used for the bok choy? Get get the same amount of water again, okay? So two ounces of water. Two ounces of water. Sorry, did we flip the salmon again or are we just? We, no, we, we flipped we it one time. Once. Okay. We've now seared both sides. Okay for three minutes. And our salmon is off the heat right now, y'all. We're gonna, we're about to glaze it. So right. I want, I'm gonna wait till everybody's ready to glaze their salmon. So take it off the heat. So if we wanna just pull ours, you can see where our salmon is off that heat so that it's not continuing to cook. We've seared it on each side for three minutes. And it's not gonna be cooked all the way through. We still have, you know, it's probably like medium rare to medium, but this is where we wanna glaze it, okay? So can you, can we pull this here? Everybody can see that. Perfect. We're gonna glaze it right here. Yeah. Okay. So what we wanna do is take some of our barbecue sauce, 
We're going to ladle it right on top of the salmon. Okay, probably about two ounces on each. And then we're going to add a little bit of water. We're going to add about two ounces of water to the pan. So just making sure everybody can hear what Jamie we just said. We added the water to the pan so the barbecue sauce doesn't burn. So we added about two ounces of sauce to the top of the salmon and then two ounces of water to the pan. Then we're going to let that cook down on low heat. Do I leave it right there? Yep, that's perfect. So now we have it back on the heat on low. We're going to let it finish cooking. That's going to give it a nice... Um, let it kind of like. So we want we want like. So we have that nice glaze on top. And now we're on low heat, and we're just going to let that sauce and that water reduce down a little bit. That steam's going to help finish that salmon in the pan. Anybody have any questions? That's. How's everybody's house smelling? Good. Is food looking good. Okay. Anybody need anybody need a cheers? This is this has been a lot of cooking. It's been a fairly this is a, this is a... Elizabeth, thank you. I'm cheersing you. Kathy, yes, thank you. Does your salmon have any heat on it right now? Yes. We do. It is on low heat. Okay. Uh, would you just recap the the sauce that you just went over? My smoke alarm went off with the salmon, so um, I got distracted. So we put about, we put like an ounce and a half to two ounces of Thai barbecue sauce on each piece of salmon. Uh -huh. And then we added two ounces of water to the pan so that barbecue sauce didn't burn. And now we have it on low heat and we're just cooking that down till that, till that sauce is cooked down to a nice barbecue, like barbecue glaze. sauce glaze. Okay. And we're gonna turn it off because what this is doing that that excess um, steam from the water is going to help finish cooking the salmon. And it's really close. Excuse me. So everything, so the salmon's so we're, finishing. Yeah, while that salmon's finishing, we're just going to whisk our butternut squash together with that brown sugar and the ginger and salt and pepper. We added like the eighth of a teaspoon of salt and pepper to this. Just get it nice and smooth. Go ahead and give it a taste and see if it needs any more salt and pepper. Mm. Ginger is so good in there. I'm glad you got a different fork. It's perfect. The butternut squash is just so rich and delicious. You don't need much to make it taste good. So it was like one ounce of brown sugar, that squeezed ginger juice in there. Christy, are you liking it? It's pretty tasty. Christy, did you taste and it? I, I, am, I was skeptical that there was enough sugar for me, but it is delicious. Good, 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 good. We have people say that sometimes, like, I'm not sure if there's enough sugar and I think he might be putting too much butter is the other thing. And then they taste it and like, oh, actually that was right. This is one of the few dishes I don't put butter in. <laughs> okay. You don't so, even need it. The, the salmon's the butter in this. So while the salmon is finishing, the other We're thing- almost, It's almost there. It's like one minute and we're- ready to plate. So this is the time to pick out what you want to plate on. So I'm plating, or Jamie, ah. Jamie is going to plate on these great black plates that we have. So we, in getting ready for the holidays, we've invested in some black plates, which may seem like an interesting choice, but this dark gold uh, palette gives us such a nice pop for both the burnt orange of Thanksgiving, like we're going to see with this butternut squash puree, and then also like a nice holiday red since um, and I don't know, maybe it'll work if we celebrate Hanukkah because our son is now going to the JCA. Um, so we're celebrating lots of holidays in our household this year, um, but definitely lots of holiday colors, both burnt orange and nice red. And so these are going to kind of anchor our tables. So, so if we see the sauce, guys, how it's become nice and viscous. Lazy, beautiful. 
So we're ready. We're ready. All right, so. Don't you love these new plates? I you? love them. <laughs> Does everybody else love these new plates? Aren't they beautiful? It's gonna look so pretty once this butternut squash puree. This is how I tell Jamie I've, I've added to the collection. Okay, we're just gonna put some butternut squash on there. I'm gonna put the salmon right on top. Let's just do, okay, yeah. I thought you were gonna put both pieces. No. We're gonna drizzle a little bit more of that glaze on top. Ah, that looks so good. And then we're just gonna take some baby bok choy and wrap it right around there. Once you have that cilantro, it's gonna be beautiful. Then we have, this is optional, but we always had edible garnishes, mostly herbs, but we never garnish anything that you can't eat. Okay. So everybody, this is our final dish. See if we can lighten that up at all. Let me see if I can give some light to it. Because it looks so pretty in person. It's a little dark. Yeah, I think so you can see a little bit of the butter. You got a little light on there. Try in right there. So that is our dish right there. We'd love to see what your final dish looks like as it gets plated. Let us see it. Henry and Caitlin looks beautiful. Emily and Howell, I love it. Claudia and Gabs looks great. Tyra looks wonderful. Samina looks great. That glaze is perfect. Ann and Sean, I love it. Joseph, that looks great. Rebecca looks wonderful. I love those stoneware plates too. Elizabeth looks great. Ivan, nice color palette for your plate. Same with Christy, looking great. Okay, let's see. Kathy, that looks perfect. That looks awesome. So everybody, we would love to remind you of um, our social pieces. We'd love for you to take a picture of your dish, tag us, put it up on Facebook or Instagram. We would love for y'all to cook with us again. Donna, that looks wonderful, looking so good. Okay, I have a, I'm not always great with names, so I want to make sure I'm going to say this right. Is it Amumin? Can you say it for me? I'm terrible. Yeah, no, that's my last name, Moomin. It's Aaliyah. Oh, Aaliyah. Right. Okay. Okay, Aaliyah. That looks, let me see it again. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Lift it up just a little bit. Yep. There you go. Nice. Looking good. Awesome. How's it tasting, everybody? Most importantly, how's it tasting? <laughs> it's amazing. Good. Adele, scooch over just a little bit. Yep, looking nice. There we go, now we get to see it. Well, everybody, we have loved cooking with you all. Um, thank you so much for spending your Friday night. We hope you all have had a great time. We hope you yeah. get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. So, Jen, yeah. Jen, what do we do? We have a lot, a lot of that barbecue sauce. What do y'all so recommend that we do? So that is good. So with that barbecue sauce, it will hold in your fridge for like five days. So you can work with it for a while. It's awesome on all kinds of seafood. It's great on chicken. 
Um, you can use it. I mean, it's wonderful. This is great on pork as well. I, well, you probably wouldn't do pork, but chicken, um, <laughs> probably would not. fish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me think. Okay, refrigerate it though, right? Yeah. Can I yeah. freeze yeah. it? Can uh, I you freeze can it freeze for it. later? You can freeze it. I strained mine. We strained it, so I nice. have a liquid, so I can freeze it. Yeah. Okay, and it's Thai barbecue. Yeah. Yep. Delicious. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank she made a family. Oh, Claudia, short ribs. Uh, Thai barbecue short ribs are amazing. Good idea. Thank you. Short ribs. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I got some. Open that breakout room. Thank too. you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. You so Thanks. So much fun. We're hungry. <laughs> so much. <laughs>